views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. There's always a parent, a family member, a teacher, a coach, or a friend that is going to be supportive and sometimes kick you in your pants when you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So let's also, with applause, recognize that support group that got our valedictorians here. Good job, parents. Good job, friends. Now, full disclosure, I was never a valedictorian. Not even close. But I can empathize with you because I've witnessed firsthand the type of dedication and hard work it takes to become a valedictorian. You see, my sister was valedictorian of her elementary school class and her junior high school class, and then was, she fell off. She was salutatorian of her high school class. So I know what it takes, or I've witnessed what it takes to actually get there. And the funny thing about my sister if I could take a moment. She was always very strong in English and the languages and the written word and grammar and all that stuff. She was less talented in the sciences and math. But what she did is she recognized that she had those weaknesses and she worked really, really hard to get better at those classes. And in the end, she became very, very good at math and sciences. So her whole portfolio was well-rounded and she taught me that you could take a weakness and actually make it a great strength. Now this reminds me of a little bit of a story I had heard a while back that deals with weaknesses and strengths. A 10-year-old boy was involved in a horrific accident, car accident, in which his left hand, his left arm, I'm sorry, was severed. He had to go to therapy and counseling and eventually to get back into what he thought was a normal life he decided he was going to take some judo classes with this old Japanese judo master. After about three or four months, he thought it very strange that the judo master would only show him one move. So he mustered up enough courage and he said, Sensei, why after three months have you, have you only shown me one move? And his sensei replied, this is the only move that I will show you, and this is the only move you will ever need to know. He thought that strange, but he trusted in his teacher. And months later, the teacher entered, it, entered him into a tournament. He was very surprised because he won the first two matches relatively easy. Now you're talking about a kid with no left arm. The third proved a little bit more difficult. The guy was a little bit more experienced, but the kid who his opponent was got a little impatient and he used that one move to win the match. Holy moly. Now he's in the finals. 
Who'd have thought it? His opponent in the finals, of course, was much bigger, much stronger, and much more experienced. And for a while, the boy was overmatched to the point that the referee called a timeout and was thinking about stopping the fight. The sensei intervened and said, no, he will continue. And continue he did. As soon as the fight resumed, his more experienced, bigger opponent let his guard down. And again, the kid instantly used that one move, pinned his opponent, and won the match. He was now the champion. As him and the sensei were going home, the boy and the sensei were going home, they were reviewing the things that he did in the match that, you know, got him to be champion. And eventually he had to ask the question that was just killing him. He had to ask, ask the sensei the issue. How did I win this tournament when I only knew you only taught me one move? And the sensei said, well, there was two reasons. Number one, you mastered the most difficult move in all of judo. And number two, the only defense against that move, your opponent would have to grab your left arm. So, his greatest strength, his greatest weakness, was his actually his greatest strength. So, you guys are not common. You guys are comments. We wonder how many professions you will impact. We wonder how many venues you will disrupt. We wonder how many landscapes you will alter. We will wait and see. The Bronx County Historical Society wishes you good luck and God bless. All right. Thank you, Gil. And next up we have uh, Cedric Fergus, who is gonna speak on behalf of Darcel Clark, the Bronx District Attorney. All right. Cedric, sir. Hello. I'm going, to talk, I'm going to talk about her um, bio history, because she can't be here today. So I'm going to talk about her bio. And then I'll, write the, I'll read the letter that she sent to the Bronx Stoker Society, OK? Um, like I said, congratulations for everybody being here. All the families and valedictorians. I'm very proud of you. Um, they work last off. Uh, from time to time, the trustees of the Bronx County Stoker Society bestow an award or persons who have done exceptional things, such as the case in our recipient today. This is called the John McNamara Trustees Award, and it's from Dar for Darcy D. Clark. She's a lifetime Bronx Knight. She was raised in public housing, educated in public schools. She earned a bachelor's degree in political science from Boston College, where she received her first Martin Luther King Jr. Morris Scholarship. She then received her law degree from Howard University. Um, she began her career, legal career, in the Bronx County District Attorney's Office in 1986. Um, she rose to serve as the supervising assistant district attorney in the Narcotics Bureau and as deputy chief of the Criminal Court Bureau. In 1999, she began as a new, a new judicial career. In more than 16 years, she served as the associate justice for the New York State Supreme Court Appellate Division, New York Supreme Court Justice for Bronx County and a criminal court judge in the Bronx and New York counties. In 1916, she became the first, she became the 16th Bronx County District Attorney. She was the first woman, the first African-American woman in New York State. 
to be elected district attorney. In addition to her affluence, has spread far beyond the Bronx. She serves as the vice president of the National District Attorney Association, as a board member of the New York State District Attorney Association, and is also a member of the Prosecutors Against Guns Violence. She also serves as a board member of the Boston College and serves in leadership positions in the National Association of Women's Judges and Bronx County Black Bar Association. She's also a former adjunct professor of Monroe College School of Criminal Justice. As this attorney, she sees her mission as pursuing justice with integrity. Because of all this, the Bronx County Historical Society is proud to present the 19, 2019 John McEnroe Trustee Award to Darcia D. D. Clark. You can clap. <laughs> and quickly, this is so letter she gave to us. I'm delighted to be selected as the recipient of the Trustee's Award of Special Distinction. This is receiving the special distinction. I hold the Bronx County Historical Society in high esteem for its splendid work. Unfortunately, I'm, not, I'm able to attend the ceremony on June 9th at Bronx Zoo, another of my favorite Bronx um, institutions due to scheduling conflict. Please accept my regrets. I hope this, the event is enjoyable and that I will be able to be there next year. Thanks for all to, to preserve the history of the Bronx and foster future historians in our world's high schools. Congratulations to the Valedictorians who will be honored. They are the best and brightest, and I wish them good luck as they embark on their futures from Darcia D. Clark. Thank you. Congratulations. Now I'd like to bring up Clifford Benton. Mr. Benton, if you would. He is going to be announcing the valedictorians who are here. When you uh, call, hear your name, please come up. We'll give you your award. And you stand over there for photographs. All righty? Good afternoon, everyone. Congratulations, valedictorians. Come up to the front when you hear your name. I'm gonna name, I'm gonna say the school and I'm gonna attempt to say your name without butchering it up. Don't hold it against me. Yes, correct us. Yes. From the Academy for Scholarship and Entrepreneurship, Joel McKenzie. From the Academy of Mount St. Ursula, Constantina Segol Segolambis. Excuse me. Segolambis, okay, thank you. From Aquinas High School, Martina Amate Perez. From All Hallows High School, Andres Valenzuela. From Archimedes Academy for Math, Science, and Technology Applications, Liz Marie Arici. From Belmont Preparatory High School, Sandra Rivera. From the Bronx High School of Science, Sterling Knight. From Bronx Theater High School, Kimberly Perrier. From Careers in Sports High School, Chastity Ceballos.
from Harry S. Truman High School, Shanelli Alonzo. From St. Barnabas High School, Brianna Allen. From St. Raymond High School for Boys, Abraham Castillo. From Theater Arts Production Company School, Haley Gunning. From West Bronx Academy for the Future, Aaron Quadrado. From Worldview High School, Christopher Peter. And last but certainly not least, from the High School of Language Innovation, Rossifer Pichardo. Is there anyone that we missed? Okay, let's give one more round of applause for all our valedictorians. Thank you. If you'd like to take some pictures, this would be the time. Good looking group, huh? Beautiful. All right. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you, one and all. And now I'd like to bring up a close friend of the Historical Society for many years, is our good neighbor, Fordham University. And we have with us today, Mr. Bill Colonna, the Director of Government Relations, Federal and Urban Affairs. I like that last part. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bill Colonna. And on behalf of Father Joseph M. McShane, President of Fordham University, we're delighted to be here this afternoon um, to support, once again, the Bronx Historical Society and this, the 64th uh, Scholarship Award celebration. Uh, <clears throat> founded in 1841, we are the oldest institution of higher education in the Bronx. Uh, we are privileged to share a history and destiny with New York and especially our borough. Uh, we have a long track record of working with community groups and educational and cultural institutions um, to enhance the vibrancy of our borough, and we're proud to support the Historical Society. For more than 60 years, the Historical Society has been making history come alive through tours, exhibitions, lectures, and programs geared towards students. This awards program seems to recognize that in order to best preserve and honor the Bronx's rich history, we must be invested in where it's going. And what this awards program does is celebrate these young scholars who are role models for their peers, leaders, and represent the future of the Bronx. So once again, on behalf of Father McShane and Fordham University, I congratulate you on your accomplishments and look forward to seeing you all continue on your trajectory for success. Thank you. And now we'll bring up, let's bring up for our Business Leader of the Year Award. Bring back Gil.
Elias Corman was a businessman and the most important philanthropist for Bronx causes in the 20th century. He served twice as president of the Bronx Chamber of Commerce and raised funds for countless civic, cultural, religious, educational, and other institutions throughout the borough. It is in his spirit that the Bronx County Historical Society honors its businessman or business person of the year. In 2019, Elias Corman Business Person of the Year began, began her career in 2007 as a bookkeeper and property manager at what was then called the Bruckner Bar and Grill on Bruckner Boulevard and Third Avenue in Mott Haven. The devastation caused by Hurricane Sandy forced that establishment to close in 2012. Nevertheless, our business person of the year saw this major setback as an opportunity to recreate. She opened the restaurant with a new name of the Mott Haven Bar and Grill. There she provides excellent food and drink for community residents, business owners, and workers and visitors who have spread the name of the Mott Haven Bar and Grill far and wide. In addition to the last five years in collaboration with Fresh Direct and area developers, she has provided meals to over 750 needy families during Thanksgiving. She is also active in the Boy Scouts of America, Community Board One, and the Hostos Golf Outing Committee to make the Mott Haven neighborhood a better place. In 2017, she opened a food truck called Mott Haven On The Go. At the same time, she started Mott Haven Events, a catering and hospitality business, of course, in the Mott Haven section of the Bronx. For all these reasons, the Bronx County Historical Society is proud to bestow the 2019 Elias Corman Business Person of the Year Award to Rosa Garcia. Thank you. Would you like to say a couple of words to these? Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I am honored to be standing here in front of you. Uh, sorry that I'm late. It was a little bit of traffic, and I missed uh, all the names that were announced. But I would like to congratulate you guys for all your achievements so far. And um, I have to tell you that it's not the end. You guys have so much more potential and so much growth that you have to go through. Um, I'll give you a, a quick little history about myself. My name is Rosa Garcia. I am Dominican, born in the Dominican Republic, came here. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Dominicana. Came here when I was nine, raised by a single mother, okay, where she raised my sister and I. I am 38 years old. I have my 12-year-old daughter there. Couldn't bring my three-year-old because she would not let me speak right now. Um, but it's just to show you guys that, you know, anything is possible. I say it that, you know, you just have to have a positive mindset. You have to be a go-getter. Don't be a follower. Don't follow anyone. Any decisions you make in life with jobs, uh, education, anything, relationships, do it because it feels right for you, not for anyone else. Um, I also have a campaign called um, I Am Me that I started. It's uh, my 31 agency, 31, because I was born January 31st. And um, it's all about not fitting inside the box, I am a victim of society. Um, back then, I was so skinny. I was 97 pounds, really curly hair, and I changed so much about myself because back then, straight hair and being thick was in. 
So I changed so much that I lost my true identity. And now in my 30s is when I really found out who I really am. And I love every single piece of myself. And anyone that comes in front of me and doesn't like it, well, then guess what? There's a door, and you could keep it moving. So I have two girls, and I have to make sure that I keep a positive environment. Um, they, very, they see everything, so I don't talk much about around them. I show them, rather. And my kids see that I have, you know, my self-esteem has been the best. Uh, for you kids, I said, well, young adults, you guys should read the book called The Power of Now. It will help you train your mindset. It will help you um, see everything in a positive way. It, focus you, it focuses you on focusing on the now, you know. And for the adults, too, you should read it, trust me. It helped me. Um, we're always worried about tomorrow and in the future. We're always like, how are we going to pay the rent? You know, how, how are my kids going to be if I go on vacation? How, you're always asking ourselves questions and we give ourselves anxiety. Please take care of your mind. Uh, I've had so many people around me with so much stress and that's why, you know, we have to take care of ourselves internally, not so much on the outside. And um, I wish you guys everything. Um, I wish you guys the best. Sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, but I really appreciate that I'm standing here in front of you guys. And that's it. Thank you. Oh, and I forgot to thank the Bronx Historical uh, Society for this amazing award. Thank you. Now, we did just get a new, another member of our valedictorian class. Uh, I wonder if um, Ms. Bisma Rasik would come up, Women's Academy of Excellence, and give you a hand. <laughs> you missed it. We had everybody here. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. All right, our next award is the uh, recipient of the Edgar Allan Poe Award, which we give out to people who have done important things in the arts, as we like to say. This year, we've got Mr. Robert Seifert, an artist. There's nothing like having artists in society. They represent an element that most of us don't know about if we're not an artist ourselves, or if we aspire to be artists. We bestow this, uh, this Poe Award on writers and artists who work well as an example of excellence, just like our valedictorians. The person who receives this award this year is a distinguished artist. He earned his Bachelor's of Fine Arts degree from the Maryland Institute and his Master's of Fine Arts degree from the Parsons School of Design. He has taught drawing and painting at the Art Students League the Washington Studio School, the Baltimore School for Arts, and Johns Hopkins University. And for 15 years, he directed the Alfred and Trafford Klotz Residency Program in more, I don't know that one, more behind? Okay, got it. France. He now teaches at the College of Mount St. Vincent in the Bronx. His artistic style is considered to be painterly realism, work that is lifelike but not photographic. Nostalgia plays a large role in his work. His paintings focus both on the natural and the urban scenes, and his cityscapes depict scenes in New York and Baltimore and feature vintage automobiles. The person we honor today with the Edgar Allan Poe Award has received numerous prizes, grants, and fellowships, and his work has been found in many institutional and private collections, including the National Gallery in Washington, D.C. He has exhibited shows in Nova Scotia, Boston, Philadelphia, Delaware, and New York. For the quality of his work, the Bronx County Historical Society awards the 2019 Edgar Allan Poe Award of Literary and Artistic Excellence to Robert Seifert. Thank you, Doc. My pleasure. Here, say it. Um, good afternoon. It's really a an honor for me to be here and receive an art award uh, from the Bronx Historical Society. 
uh, in honoring all of you. You know, the future of our, our great uh, city of New York and the United States and all the things, that are, you're, the, you're the best of a selected group of people from the Bronx high schools and you're gonna go on to, to do something important that's very needed for all of us. And I'm an artist. Not the most needed thing in the world, perhaps, in some ways, but you'd be surprised at how needed art and literature, poetry, and many, many other things. We, we deal in a media world today. You're, you're dealing in very much of a different world than I'm used to with all of the social media and media, but it's so effective, the media. And in my department where I teach at, uh, in college, I basically am dealing in the media department, and that seems to be the future in many ways of communicating. And so you're all going to be great communicators because you've shown that to be here today, and uh, I'm really very happy to be here with you. Well, thank you. So we all have a, uh, a little sheet of paper there. These are the lyrics of God Bless America. It's been our tradition for the Historical Society to finish this great event with the singing of God Bless America. Are there any major singers here that would like to come up and lead it? We always look for that. <laughs> Does everybody have a sheet? It's OK. I don't have my sheet. That should tell you something. Let's see if I have it here. Which usually means I have to start off. I, thank you very much. So, as we conclude the 2019 Bronx County Historical Society Bronx High School Valedictorians Awards Program, let us sing God Bless America. And so we begin. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, and that I love, and I went off, that's okay, just keep going. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. It's all in the words, remember. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. Thank you one and all. See you next year.